Good evening. I'm Roscoe Lee Brown. The commission report talks about the communications gap between the people of the ghetto and the rest of America. Just how deep is it? To scratch the surface of this skin-deep problem, PBL now offers part of a test prepared by a social worker from the ghetto of Watts in Los Angeles. The social worker, Mr. Adrian Dove, was struck by the fact that low-income black men were required to do well on tests keyed to middle-class experience and educational standards. So Mr. Dove decided to put the shoe on the other foot by writing a test for middle-class Americans, both white and black, to see how well they understood the special culture of the ghetto. With each question, you will be given four choices from which to select an answer. You will be given the correct answer at the end of each question. So if you have a piece of paper and pencil handy, simply mark down the numbers one to ten and take the test. And now for the first question. The term square is an almost universal one by now. In case you didn't know, a square is a person who just isn't with it. One wonders how many people who work on Madison Avenue are with it in their knowledge of what goes on below the railroad station at 125th Street on their way in from suburbia. 125th Street, the Broadway, the main drag of Harlem. What better a place to ask the first question on our quiz? Question one then, everybody. In the Negro community, the opposite of square is, how about A, round, or maybe B, up. Why not C, down, or maybe D, hip. Time for the answer, folks. The answer, as every good brother and sister know, is D. The opposite of square is hip. Nowadays, soul music is the big thing in the Negro community. But jazz is always a favorite with the brothers. After all, they started it back in New Orleans. So here's question number two. The nickname bird or yard bird refers to only one giant of jazz. Is it A, Lester Young, B, Benny Goodman, C, Charlie Parker, D, the Birdman of Alcatraz? The answer is C. And there he is, the man who blazed the trail for most of modern jazz, the one and only Charlie Bird Parker. When a black man's wrapping it out to the brothers, a common comeback from the audience might be that's right, brother. Now, there's another way of saying this, which leads us to question three. And the following four choices complete the phrase which begins, tell it, A, as it is, B, how it is, C, like it is, D, straight. The answer is C, tell it like it is. Yes, tell it like it is, brother. From Monte Carlo to Vegas to Harlem, throwing dice is as popular a sport as throwing the bull. Which brings us to question four. If you throw the dice so that seven shows on the top, what's on the bottom? Is it A, seven, B, snake eyes, C, boxcars, D, 11? To repeat question four. The answer is A, seven, come 11. Hope you didn't crap out on that roll. Now here's another saying that you'll hear in the inner city, ghetto or slum or whatever you call it. Let's see if you know the answer to question five, which goes, if a man is called a handkerchief head, he is A, a cool cat, B, a porter, C, an Uncle Tom, D, a preacher. Time's up, Massa. And in case you haven't guessed, the answer is C. A handkerchief head is an Uncle Tom. And why, here they are. America's number one aunt and uncle. One of the familiar phrases in a Negro community for how to get ahead is a phrase that we want you to complete. So for question six, complete the following sentence. Quote, 
You've got to get up early in the morning to A, catch worms, B, be healthy, wealthy, and wise, C, fool me, D, be the first one on the street. The answer is C. You've got to get up early in the morning to fool me. This is Muhammad Ali, the former Cassius Clay, and as the boxing moguls would have it, the former heavyweight champion of the world. Another famous Negro who dropped what he called his slave name is the jazz pianist Ahmad Jamal. So for question seven, we're asking you, what was the former slave name of Ahmad Jamal? Was it A, Willie Lee Jackson, B, Leroy Jones, C, Fritz Jones, D, Andy Johnson? The answer is D, Andy Johnson. Ahmad Jamal may have kept his initials for his luggage, but otherwise, he dropped his baggage, slave name, for good. Here's another expression that is popular in the black community. Let's see if you know what it means. Now question eight asks, if a man is called a blood, what is he? Is he a, a, prize fighter? B, Mexican American? C, Negro? D, American Indian? The answer is C, a blood is a Negro brother. No two ways about that. Soul food is a popular staple of the ghetto. It consists of delicacies like hog maws, black-eyed peas and chitterlings or chitlins. Now about chitlins, just suppose you're a black Julia child and you wanted to cook these chitlins to a tea. For best results, how long do you cook chitlins? A for 15 minutes, B, 24 hours, C, one week over a low flame, D, one hour. The answer is B, 24 hours. In addition, trim off most of the fat, but keep a little around for taste, add a pinch of salt, and you've got a meal for real. There are some black people who say that Juneteenth June 19th, that is, should be a legal holiday. So for our 10th and final question, we ask you to complete the following sentence. Juneteenth should be a legal holiday because that was the day that A. Martin Luther King was born. B. Booker Taliaferro Washington was born. C. Lincoln freed the slaves. D. Texas freed its slaves. The answer is D. Juneteenth, or June 19th, was the day back in 1865 when General George Granger and his Union forces landed on Texas soil and freed the slaves. It is still celebrated by black folk down south, those who haven't lost their farms and gone north, that is. Well, how did you do? I passed, and the test, that is. PPL suggests that anyone with five or more correct answers in some kind of touch with the people of the ghetto has been to lunch, perhaps. But if you had anything less than five correct, then we respectfully submit that in the jargon of the social worker who wrote the test, you may well be culturally deprived. And now for a non-scoring question which tells the score. Recently, Jet Magazine asked its black readers to answer the following question. What ethnic name do you prefer to be known by? Jet gave its readers these five possibilities. In what order do you think they were chosen by the Jet readers? The five choices which you see on the screen are shuffled, if you'll excuse the expression, from the final results of the Jet poll. And now for the answer. At the bottom, in fifth place, was that old euphemism, colored, and in fourth place was that schizoid term, African-American. In third place, with less than a quarter of the votes, was the term, Negro the word which the white community and communications media are accustomed to use. In second place was the term black, and in a comfortable lead for the moment is the phrase Afro-American. Of these two expressions, black is more popular among youth and college students. <laughs>